When we talk about precipitation reactions, there are a lot of spectacular ones we can show the students. We can show them in beakers and uh, microscale sizes. Um, one of the, the favorite all-time classic precipitation reactions involves a compound that you don't want to use a lot of. And I know some people can't have it at all, and that would be lead nitrate potassium iodide, precipitation of lead iodide. Um, the reason it's so spectacular is because it produces a beautiful yellow precipitate, something we really can't find a good substitute for color-wise. I'm going to show you that precipitation on a microscale level and talk about some alternatives you could use that certainly aren't as pretty and, and not as colorful, but um, when we talk about the disposal procedure, um, you might choose to use one of the other precipitates instead. I do this on an overhead. Um, today we're going to do it with an overhead camera, but it shows up very nicely if you do it on an overhead and project the reaction up onto the screen. One of the, uh, one of the best tips I ever got at a workshop was how to make a scoop out of a uh, barrel pipette by cutting it into a scoop shape because I found that the uh, large scoops that they give you are a little too big for this and the small spatulas aren't quite big enough. So I make my own. And what I want here is to put some distilled water into my Petri dish. Uh, I do want to be careful to use distilled water because you never know which ions in your tap water are going to interfere with this reaction. I've got my scoops labeled, and I'm going to take a little bit of the lead nitrate in one scoop. Well, that's a solid chunk. We want to make sure it's nice powdery form. All right. And I'm just going to set that there. That's not going to roll over if I don't bump it. And I'm going to put some of the potassium iodide in the other scoop. I'll, yeah, measurement isn't that important. I'm taking equal amounts of each. That doesn't mean they're equal masses, and it certainly doesn't mean they're equal number of particles. And the idea is to put each ion on opposite sides of the dish. Now, we're showing two things here. We're going to show the precipitate that forms, and we're also going to show that it's going to form more on one side. It won't form in the middle. It'll form closer to one side than the other. And we can talk about how long it takes for the ions to first separate as they dissolve and then to migrate across the plate. I'm not going to stir it. I'm going to let the ions find their own way through the natural motion of the molecules of the water. And you'll see that, some of the ion, or that one of the ions will travel a little faster than the other. Um, the only ions we're concerned with here are the lead ions and the iodide ions. The nitrate from the lead nitrate and the potassium from the potassium iodide are just spectator ions. So I'm going to add these to each side. And it's not going to be instantaneous, but we're going to watch this react. Okay, Right now, what's happening, and you can't see it, is that the ionic compounds are separating into their individual ions. Those ions then become hydrated by the water. And as they become hydrated, and natural motion of the molecules carries them through this dish. And eventually, they'll meet. And when they do meet, we should be able to see that. So if we focus on the plate, I'm not sure how much of the dissolution you can see. This is a good time to talk about, though, separation of ions, hydration of the ions being surrounded by the water molecules, uh, the motion of molecules, all kinds of things you can add to this. Our, one of our jobs here is to find out how far these ions migrate. Be careful with this one. One of the ions will move faster than the other. I have actually heard teachers refer to this as Graham's Law. Graham's Law refers to gases. These are not gases. They're ions moving in solution. Um, 
Graham's law refers to the movement of gases. We can see the yellow lines beginning to form there. Let me see it. Is that showing up well? And it's growing across the plate. And we can see that it formed closer to the side with the lead ions than it did to the side with the iodide ions, meaning that the iodide ions seem to move further in the same amount of time than the lead ions did, which, if we look at their atomic masses, makes a lot of sense. Lead ions are a little, small, a little heavier and a little bigger and therefore would take longer to separate from the nitrate and longer to hydrate and then take a little longer to move. I love this because it's a nice spectacular yellow color that the kids don't get to see very often. It's a, it's a common picture you'll see in textbooks. In fact, some textbooks have this precipitation reaction right on the front cover. That beautiful yellow color. And that will grow all the way across the plate. Um, I'm seeing, looks to me like not all the lead has dissolved, or is that a bubble? Oh, I can't tell. I'm just seeing if that's solid. No. That seems to be something on the paper underneath it. Okay. Um, I'm seeing another line at the far end. And the longer you let it go, the closer those two lines will get to each other. And, all right. Okay, now we've seen the precipitation. We've seen the pretty yellow color. What do we do with it? This is not something you can throw down the drain. Most things you don't want to throw down the drain anyway. It's not even something you want to toss in the garbage can. This is something that needs to be dealt with in a special way. So what I've got is a ring stand with a filter set up in a funnel. And I'm going to first, I'm going to make sure that this has reacted as completely as possible. Um, we've seen our yellow line. I'm going to stir it and get all of that lead to precipitate out. Another thing you want to do is go ahead and add more potassium iodide. Uh, we're going to do that now, and we're going to do that in a little while to make sure that all the lead has precipitated. We want to get all the lead out of this before we can dispose of the rest of it. Get the lead out, as my mother used to say. All right. This is the hard part, and this is where I usually spill. So we're going to do something about that. We can take a spill tray and put that underneath. I don't want this on my hands. I don't want any of it left on the table when I'm done. So I want to pour it into this beaker so that I can filter it out. And I'm not even going to get rid of the Petri dish right now because as you can see there's still a lot of lead iodide in there. Pour it through the filter carefully. There's filter paper in there. And we're going to do a lot of rinsing here. Make sure that there's no residue left in the beaker. Okay. I'm going to rinse out, make sure the beaker has all uh, traces of the lead iodide out of there. And I also have to do the same thing for the Petri dish. Um, I can demonstrate all of the filtering. It does get, take kind of a long time. But what I do want to show you is... As we capture that filtrate in the beaker, it's possible there are still unreacted lead ions in there. And to test for that, all you need to do is add some more potassium iodide to that. Potassium iodide isn't going to be a toxic it isn't a toxic substance. And if we add more and it turns yellow, we're going to need to filter it some more. If we add potassium nitrate and we get no yellow, or potassium iodide, I'm sorry, potassium nitrate wouldn't do anything. So I'm going to just add a little bit more potassium iodide to that. And I'm not seeing any yellow form. So it appears that I got all the lead out. And then the filtrate should have potassium ions and nitrate ions from the potassium iodide and the lead nitrate 
and all the lead ions and all the iodide ions will be in the filter paper. All right, that's great. The filtrate is fine. What do we do with the filter paper when it's full of lead iodide? This is something that should not be disposed of in a landfill. It should not be thrown into the garbage. You can consult uh, your local uh, disposal people. What I like to do is save this kind of material and take it to uh, someone I know at a local university because they have means to dispose of these. Um, so that is an issue. The lead ions are an issue and you may not want to use them. I like to because of the color and because I'm close to a big city, I have ways to take care of that. I have other people who have ways to take care of that. What are your alternatives if you choose not to use lead? Anything that makes a precipitate will work in this. There are plenty of white precipitates. Uh, certainly many of the calcium substances. You can use any um, calcium nitrate with uh, a hydroxide solution. will give you calcium hydroxide precipitate. Um, you can use a potassium nitrate and a sodium sulfate to give a calcium sulfate precipitate. We found that copper ions and phosphate ions uh, do make a colored precipitate. Of course, the copper ions also make the colored solution. It is visible, and it's certainly something that you can see. I just happen to like the yellow because it is very brightly colored from two colorless solutions. Again, if you have any concern about the disposal, um, you can consult with uh, you know, somebody at a university would probably have some good answers for that. Um, but don't, please don't throw it away. Don't throw it in the garbage. Don't throw it down the sink.